Jessica Nuttall. I'm here with my co-host from Jupiter Key Productions, Ellie Jade, and on today's segment we'll be discussing climate change. Thank you, Jess. Climate change affects us on a global scale and is widely talked about as a whole for our planet. However, what are Greater Manchester citizens and councils doing to help fight against it? Jessica and I attended a Green Summit event on climate change where our Mayor Andy Burnham shared his initiatives for our boroughs with the public. He gave a traffic light rating to each aspect of the boroughs and discussed the plan set for the future to help. In the traffic light ratings, the Transport in Greater Manchester scored a green rating. The Mayor discussed a plan to introduce a new network by 2025. Introduction to electric buses will also take place. Buses also also have a fare reduction to make public transport more affordable to its users, which is already in effect. Our trams already run on renewable energy, which is a bonus for our carbon footprint. We are also the first city within the UK to have a zero carbon transport, which is a great step towards the battle against climate change. The buildings in our borough received an amber rating. We have built the first net zero homes in Manchester and there are plans for more to be built in Salford. There will be 30,000 net zero carbon homes with much more affordable heating, lighting and rent. The councils are waiting on approval, but for 2028 they want no buildings to have permission to be built unless they are net zero carbon buildings. They also want to retrofit over 40,000 homes in the next five years. The UK's largest green hydrogen plant also received planning to be bigger and the council planned to generate more carbon neutral energy as a whole. At the Green Summit, Councillor Martin Cox explained a five year environmental plan that all 10 boroughs have signed up to to help better our homes and help fight climate change. This five year plan involves new technology, accessing new finance from the government and reducing our carbon emissions. Due to the fact that transport is the biggest emitter of carbon, they are planning to introduce more low emission buses, cycle hire and car sharing onto our streets. They also want to expand use of solar PV, storage and charging on local authority assets, as well as bidding for a further £90 million for decarbonisation of homes. As well as attending the Green Summit in 2022, we also sent out surveys to the young people of Greater Manchester to find out their opinions on climate change and whether our boroughs are doing enough about it. We asked if they found climate change to be important and every single one said yes. However, when asked if they thought the local boroughs were planning enough to combat climate change, no one said yes at all. The majority of people said maybe or that they didn't know and few said no. We then asked them to explain why they didn't think enough was being done, and here are some of their responses. They have plans in place, but the end date for these plans are so far off that it's hard to tell if they're doing enough to help the planet. I have seen they have plans, but when looking around, it doesn't feel like the plans are in action at all. Another person also mentioned that they tried to do one thing, but it might not be enough, since it is a global issue and affects the whole world, rather than one thing. One answer also mentioned that people usually speak on the topic but never do anything about it, like making things a law. As well as them giving answers on those, we asked them if they thought the citizens of the boroughs were doing enough to help, and if not, suggest what they could do. One person mentioned that people don't recycle or use public transportation, which is raising their carbon footprint. Lots of answers gave us some suggestions on what we as people in Greater Manchester can do to help. These were using metal straws, turning lights off, reusable plastics, battery LEDs instead of other light sources, using solar panels, electric cars instead of ones that run on petrol, recycling and walking instead of driving or using public transportation whenever you can. Most of these are all things that every person in the boroughs can do. So the question is, why don't they? We also have one comment that stuck out of our survey, which was this. I don't think citizens can do as much as major corporations or the government can do. At this point, there's absolutely nothing a citizen can do to help change climate change. We can do things to help us feel better about climate change and also the way we live, because that's the right thing to do. But it's up to the corporations and the government. I believe all the generations should have broken the cycle. Here are some interviews we did with local students from Hopwood Hall College. How much is the impact of climate change coming up? Um, it's had 
be quite a big effect on um, on the environment and animals and where people live, lots of floods and things and um, pollution in the air. So it's definitely affecting us compared to how it probably affected us years ago. Yeah, I know like uh, animals are going extinct because their territories are like diminishing, like at a great pace. And I've heard like a lot about like by some like year as 2050, most of like the polar like Antarctica and stuff like that will be melted, leaving like polar bears, penguins, and stuff like that. Just Honestly, uh, switch to electric cars because normal cars and like and normal yeah pretty much normal cars, planes and all that just ruin like the climate just ruins it. Do you think we have enough time to stop climate change? Um, we do have enough time if everyone's on board and if everyone knows what they have to do. But if we don't all do it collectively, then no, I don't think we've got enough time. It's like a joint sort of effort. Yeah, we definitely have enough time. We have more than enough time right now. Just that we all need to work together, like I said before. If that's the only way. Thank you to the students who participated in the interviews. In addition to their thoughts, the majority of the people who answered our surveys agreed that everybody is responsible for helping climate change while some blame factories, the council, the government and the big companies and corporations. Here is an interview one of our crew members will did with James Wilden, who is the managing director of Wilden Brothers Waste Limited. So how big of a play is waste management in terms of keeping the environment safe? It's a big part of it. I mean, as far as waste goes, it's it's far better to and it takes up less effort to um, to reuse and or to recycle and turn it back into a product than using the raw materials. Just take cardboard for example. You cut down trees to, to make cardboard, you know, that's it's it's, it's fibre that they use to do it. And so our cardboard that gets recycled out of their waste, or the recycling that you do at home, for example that goes back into making cardboard, you pulp it back and, and bring it back. Um, and even our waste that we create or generate our waste to energy goes to actually drying the, the, the paper, the, you know, the pulp to, to, um, to turn it back into cardboard and then we get it back as, as whatever commodity that you want to buy from whatever shop it be with a cardboard box around it or part of it. Have you seen uh, a change in the amount of recycling amongst mm -hmm. your customers over the years as environmental care has become popularised? 100%. Okay. It's um, <clears throat> going back, I've been in the business for 20 years, we didn't used to really recycle. Mm -hmm. It was all about filling a hole in the landfill. And there has been a massive ethos throughout the world. Um, and our, com our company is probably one of the leaders in um, recovery and recycling that I know of in our area. There's not many people, even the big boys, they tip with us because they can't achieve 
the level of recycling. Certain numbers of the um, customers demand a higher level than they can create. So depending on where you choose to send your waste to energy, there are different ways of viewing whether it is 100% recycled or not. So for argument's sake, we deal with Ferry Bridge. So we send our waste to, some of our stuff goes to a place called Ferry Bridge and that's all the Biffa and Veridor and Veolia can do. They only send to the likes of Ferry Bridge or a big burner. That creates ash and gas that goes to the atmosphere. Now the gas is more like a steam, you know what I mean? There's not really, any, they just vent the steam to be honest. There's very little that comes out of those stacks. But they do create this ash. Now this ash, then as I said, went to a landfill still. There is parts of it that are recycled, some of it's hazardous. So it has to go to a landfill and, and be dealt with in the correct means. Whereas if you do an SRF and then send it to a cement kiln, the ash goes in the cement. There is no, um, what's it called, um, conflicts of war with it. You know what I mean? There is no... Um, uh, problem with any of the products that come off it it is literally everything is recovered out of it or recycled it all goes into the cement so there is no wastage there's no ash there's no you know what i mean stuff that's binned off after so with that being the case that has a hundred percent recycling tick you know what i mean for doing it so these can't kind of create because it takes a big plant and it's not easy to do it's complicated and the bigger companies struggle to sort of uh, make that work so they end up using the likes of us to achieve 100% for some of their customers. So it's, it, it, as far as our companies goes, we have um, carried on. We've done really well. We've you know excelled um, to the point where, like I said, I think we're the, the best in our area. There is other people throughout the country who do what they do, do what we can do, but um, you have to have it tied up with a contract into your energy burner. Yeah. And they don't have that mm. like we do. Oh, they just don't seem to be able to make it work. It's complicated. Yeah. But so yeah, and as far as the recycling itself, it's become easier to recover and reuse the products. And people are choosing recycled products because it's good for the environment. It looks good for them as a company. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they push for it so hard. But it is consumer demanded as well. So there's only a certain level that will push to that. Will they accept that it's double the price because it's all been recovered, yeah. or will they be happy to buy? one that's been straight from a tree. You know what I mean? Or straight yeah. from whatever it be, from the minerals that's been produced. Yeah, yeah. The consumers are demanding it, so it works because of that. As far as financially, it'd be far cheaper to drive it over a hill and tip it in a landfill, cheaper. But you've got less people involved, you've got less men, and less plant, no half a million pound shredder that's running at it every day. But I'm, I'm just explaining that the, the world is demanding this type of um, recovery and recycling. Thank you, Will and James, for the interview. And thank you for tuning in to Solar News. We hope this show has educated you about how you can help our environment and help stop climate change. For more information, you can visit the Greater Manchester Green Summit website. Goodbye.